I'm Steve Marshall, artist and pastor on staff at Willowbrook United Methodist Church. And this is July of 2020, and I went four months before I finally got a haircut a couple of days ago. You may be able to notice the difference, but right now I want to share with you a whale of a tale. The story of Jonah and the whale is one of those Bible stories, along with Adam and Eve and Noah's Ark, that tend to get relegated to children's Sunday school and therefore somewhat trivialized. The story is somewhat fanciful and has developed somewhat of a fairy tale reputation. It certainly inspired Italian novelist Carlo Collati's popular story, Pinocchio, while Disney's animated film has made Pinocchio a cultural icon. But what about Jonah? What does the Bible tell us about Jonah? And, more importantly, what can Jonah teach us today? Well, I believe the story of Jonah can indeed teach us two things. First, that no one is too bad for the grace of God. And two, God wants us to have the same compassion for others as God has for each of us. In a world that is so bitterly divided along religious, ethnic, and political lines, perhaps Jonah is more than just a fish story. Now, Jonah was one of the lesser prophets of the Old Testament. His book is barely two pages in length and contains none of his teachings. Some scholars view it as an allegory, a parable of the dangers of nationalism, of thinking that those who are not like us especially our enemies, are beyond God's grace. Well, that danger still exists today. The story begins with God speaking to Jonah, telling him to go to the great city of Nineveh, the capital city of Israel's most hated enemy of that time, Assyria, to preach against their wickedness and to warn them of God's impending judgment. And Nineveh was certainly evil. Nineveh was called by the prophet Nahum, that bloody city. It was well known for its cruelty to its captives. For example, one of their kings made a habit of cutting off the hands, feet, noses, and ears of his captives. So Nineveh wasn't the place to go, especially as a Jewish prophet sent to preach a hard message. So what does Jonah do? He heads in the wrong direction, the opposite direction. Perhaps you've heard of Wrong Way Regals, the football player who inadvertently scored a touchdown for the opposing team in the 1929 Rose Bowl. Well, meet Wrong Way Jonah. But he's going the wrong way on purpose. He intends to get as far away from Nineveh as he can. He boards a boat to head to Tarshish, but then encounters a great storm. Well, Jonah knows who's behind this storm. And he tells the sailors to throw him overboard to save themselves. They do, and whereupon we are told he is swallowed by a great fish. Now, the Bible never says it is a whale, but what other fish is large enough to swallow a grown man? Besides, Jonah and the whale sounds better than Jonah and the great big fish. Jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, it was then that Jonah took stock of his situation. He repented before God and was promptly vomited out onto the shore. Yes, yuck. Well, now God speaks a second time, again telling Jonah to go to Nineveh. And this time Jonah obeys. He gets to Nineveh and begins preaching to the people. In 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. And to Jonah's great consternation, the people repent. They proclaim a fast. The people put on sackcloth and ashes. Even the king put on sackcloth and covered himself in ashes, the sign of repentance. And what did God do? The very thing Jonah did not want him to do. God spared the city of Nineveh. God had taken pity on the people of Nineveh and he spared the city. And Jonah was furious. You see, the reason Jonah ran away at the beginning of the story was not because he was a coward, but rather it was because he had no compassion towards his enemy Nineveh. He realized that God would forgive them if they repented. Hear what Jonah says at the beginning of chapter 4. 
He prayed to the Lord, O Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Far from being pleased that Nineveh had been spared, Jonah sulked. Why? Because the great enemy of Israel has been spared. Now, it's a strange story, but with an important message. God's grace extends to everyone. What the people of Nineveh deserved and what they got were two different things. They deserved judgment, but they received forgiveness. They deserved punishment, but they received mercy. They deserved the wrath of God, but they received the grace of God. God is concerned about the people in the city of Nineveh. God always wants to save people. He is in the saving business. That is why God sends Jonah to Nineveh. He wants to see them saved. The story also tells us that God shows compassion for prodigal sons and daughters who run away from him. God never gives up on Jonah, not even when Jonah runs away from God, not even when Jonah sits under a vine and pouts because he's mad at God. The story of Jonah is really about God. It reveals that when God calls us, life immediately changes. Here's Jonah having his morning cup of coffee, reading the newspaper, and suddenly he hears God say, go to Nineveh. Just like that, his world is turned upside down. Have you ever received a message or a phone call that turned your life upside down? Maybe you can relate to Jonah. The second thing we learn about God is that God never gives up on us. Jonah ran away from God, but God never left Jonah. When your world is turned upside down, God is still there. God will never leave you. That's God's rock-solid promise to you. No matter what you are facing in life, no problem is bigger than God. With God, every challenge can be overcome. A third thing we learn about God is that God's grace is greater than any evil. God's love is unconditional and eternal. There's nothing we can do that is so bad that God can't forgive us. Isn't that great news? Like Noah, we sometimes fall into the trap of thinking that some people are so bad, such terrible sinners, that all they deserve is judgment and punishment. When we see others sin, we want to see God's justice. When we sin, we hope for God's mercy. You see, for most of us, God's grace is hard to accept, hard to believe, hard to comprehend. God's grace defies our expectations and leads us to see the infinite love of God. Finally, we see that God gave Jonah a long leash. He allowed him to run, to be angry. You see, God doesn't always stop us quickly. Sometimes he allows us to take dead-end roads, but he never stops being concerned about us. God never stops pursuing us either. And do you know what that is called? It is called grace. It is called mercy. It is called the love of God. Amen.